Yeah, a very packed as Vayne player. The big question coming into this champ select though, Pastry Time, which team is going to get Janna and to a lesser extent Annie? So much of the support picks for both the Direwolves and for the Chiefs have been one of those two support champions. Well, let's find out exactly where they're going to go. We are into the draft for our first game here of our final best of five here between the Direwolves and the Chiefs. The Chiefs will start on the red side. That's what they wanted. Direwolves over on the blue here for game one. Shavana, Callista, Morgan. The world's first three bands and Rek'Sai and that Hecarim get it out of here. I mean the Hecarim finally gets respect banned. Only Legacy has been a team that has left Hecarim up wow. against the Chiefs. But with this Fizz ban coming through, Janna is left open. You'd have to think they're going to snap it up. We've got to that stage where once again Janna is the top of the priority list. Just because with how 5.6 works out, there isn't necessarily those must-pick, must-ban champions. Of course, the audience might say, what about Sejuani? She's available in this situation. But Spooks has shown he's so happy to pick up the Zac and try and match the CC engage with that champion. Janna's not locked in. No. It's actually going to be a Sivir first pick. Yeah, first pick Sivir here wow. is what the Wolves want. We've seen her almost make a resurgence in playoffs, weirdly enough. Was playing a lot in the early split as the Chiefs answer powerful picks here. Silent and Janna, their first it's two. It's a crazy thing that so many things have changed since week one that we're actually gone round in circle and we're back again. Sivers the first pick, even though there's the likes of the hyper carries like Jinx who have a wonderful laning phase against Sivers. Sivers as a laning champion has been largely worked out, but with the Cinder Hulk meta coming back, with it being so popular to go for the health stackers, the CC bots that need help gap closing, why not pick the on the hunt? Why not pick Sivers for comp and just deal with the fact that the laning phase is not what it used to be? No, and you know, as you said, get those big tanks around, get everyone moving around the map, rotate. We've seen both the Dials and the Chiefs play some of their best games in the split on Sivir and King. Some of his best stats come from that champion. Impressive to see Perfection draw two bands in this first game. I wonder if we'll ever creep to the three bands there because Hecker and Fizz is a lot of respect for it. The Dials are going to lock it in and he's going to go over to Chopper and Soul Strikes will get Sejuani. But you really feel like Chiefs have got what they want and they're happy giving these particular picks over to the Dials. They've taken the A-plus support. 12-0 between the Direwolves and the Chiefs is Janna. They have that PS4. That opens up the like of Jinx, who we've already said has a wonderful laning matchup against the the Sivir. Scion also has been a popular jungle pick coming through from Die Wars. Of course, Perfection, not known as the tank player, plays more the carries like the Fizz and Hecarim that have been banned away, and the Vladimir, which is available in this situation. So they've got Scion, likely going to be the top laner for Swiper. They've got their support, and the answering picks are Sejuani, who we've already discussed. We haven't seen Spooks put a big priority on that champion. Happy to pick up Zac and try and match the initiation that all go the other way. And we mentioned the Elise wasn't in the picks and bans, or at least in the contested picks. At least 5.6 to see the Elise buffs come through. This tells me Elise, Lucian, they're playing for the mid game. They want to ensure that Daiwas can't get those hyper carry players like the Vladimir that would probably be for perfection in the top lane going. They want to finish this game early. Yeah, and they're going to get aggressive. That's how Chiefs get so many of their wins. Even if it's just on later game champions, they often, their style doesn't change even if the picks might adjust slightly here. So Elise, Lucian, a great opener there for the Chiefs. But the Wolves have a few picks to make here as well. And I like that you mentioned the Janna, the undefeated support between the two teams. The most played for both of them though after that, it's Annie and it's a big pick here as well. I mean just human weed stats, 5-0 Janna, 4-0 Annie is Chuffer's record. So this is already undefeated, uncharted territory because Janna, 7-0, and zero, also undefeated. One of these champions will finally have their first loss for the respective teams. 2-1 and one on Annie actually is his second most played here, Rosie. So we've seen the priorities come through. They've really been thinking about their solo lanes. They're going magic damage heavy. It's Vladimir and Cho Gap. Yeah, Cho and the Vlad coming through there for the Wolves. We had the uh, Vladimir hovered for a while. Perfection showing a lot of comfort on that champion in the semifinals. But Sharp, I believe a new pick for him, it makes sense. Cho'Gath feels like a sharp champion, very defensive, good wave clear, but something different here to start things off. And don't let this mistake you here, viewers. We know exactly where these picks are going to go. Even though they're flexible champions, this will be a Vladimir top. Perfection brought that out in the last game of the semi-finals. The Cho'Gath ma mid makes a lot of sense. As you said, he's more of a wave clear player, but the important factor, AP Cho'Gath mid is so good against Assassins, which of course is Swift's wheelhouse. You don't want to play the Ari. You don't want to play the Zed. 
against Choga. If you have to go for a wave clear champion, you have to go for a control pick. And damned if they didn't get both in a Nivea. Yeah, big farming here. And this was the combo that the Chiefs used in their first game against Immunity in that semi final as well. The Anivia release. We talk about Anivia loves to get her farm a great wave clear champion, but don't be too deceived there. Anivia does some very. Uh, very strong early game damage. I mean, that Frostbite E does so much damage early. It actually goes up to 350 base damage at level 9. And of course, the Flash Frost, the Q, the stun that they're able to get in here. We've got Cocoon Flash Frost. We're talking about huge amount of targeted CC very early into the game. Elise has always been known about early game damage and control. We're going to see some crazy mid-game focus coming through. But remember, it is a Cho'Gath. Base health is high after level 6 even starts to pile on the health. Getting an assassination on Cho'Gath, no easy feat. No with all that CC as well. A great follow-up. We talk about Sharp, more of a utility player, a big role player for his carries. We've got the Siva and the Vladimir here as well. I have to think here in the first game, Papa Smoothie, both teams got exactly what they wanted. I feel like maybe the Chiefs had the slight edge just because they forced Diwals into reactionary picks. They weren't necessarily prioritizing themselves. It doesn't feel like Diwals took anything away from the Chiefs, whereas you'd look at champions like Janna and say, okay, maybe those were taken away from the Diwals. But it's still a really exciting lineup, and both teams are playing to their strengths. Mid-game has always been the peak of, of the play coming through from the Chiefs. The Diawals, they've got a late game hyper carry in the top lane against Sion. We've already seen Vladimir versus Sion. Pretty good matchup for Vladimir. But one thing we have to mention, ladies and gentlemen, even though we expect perfection to go off in a Diawals victory, Chiefs have already showed they always keep that carry top laner on a short leash. They always send multiple members, craft strategies around keeping perfection down. The MVP leader for the Diawals. Well, we'll have to see if the Chiefs can hold down perfection one more time if he will be unleashed like he was in the semi-final. We are here for our first game of our grand final, the Diawals versus the Chiefs. It's so exciting. We're looking at just some of the early rotations. Will we see the defensive fans come out? It's a massive match. We already talked about the stakes. First ever OPL champions. The road to MSI through qualifying for the International Wildcard Invitational. In this situation, you'd probably expect a defensive fan with so much on the line. Well, Dialves are going to buck the trend at least for now and spread out as four now moving through. King actually scouting off in towards the mid as well. And the Wolves going to look for some early wards. What do we always talk about when we look at the Dialves? Lane swap on perfection. I mean, And this is definitely what the Dialves want they want to get as much information as possible on level one just to stop those perfection shenanigans that Chiefs have traditionally been trying to pull off against this team. They're walking through a ward themselves. Their path is very predictable, and there's a lot of early game power from the Chiefs level one. Yeah, good uh, attempted stun there, but just some trades going to come back and forth. Sharp going to find the rupture there onto Swiper, but he's quite tanky. Rosie lining up the double knock up there. Q going to come in, finds onto two perfection. Going to get low force to flash soul strikes now. Going to get chased in Swiffer. Flash, flash, frost forward there onto perfection. Damage comes in and first blood goes to Rosie. The Flash, Flash Frost, very difficult to say, but so effective in this game. Keeping perfection down looks a little bit easier when he no longer has Flash. And whatever plan Chiefs had, you can expect plenty of attention for Vladimir in the first six minutes of this and game. it's one of the hallmarks of the Chiefs' play across the region. Their level one is always consistently amazing here. Diwolves gonna lick their wounds a bit. Start on the Krugs now for Soul Strikes. King and Chuffer gonna help a hand out there. Spooks on the same side of the jungle. Gonna get a bit of damage there done onto the Grom. So jungle is not too hindered, but Swiper already starting his camp freely. Yeah, you can tell, of course, executed, but that's only a fantasy point dissuasion there. No, of course, kill credit coming over to the Diwolves. He'll pick up level two and port to lane against a Vladimir, who we've already mentioned doesn't have flash. And just unpacking that level one, I actually really like it from the Diwolves because that's two games in a row against the Chiefs. Okay, a couple of weeks ago in the OPL, where the Chiefs just got a big level one advantage and never allowed perfection to become late game ready. So they tried to be proactive. They didn't want to be the reactive team this time, but again, fell down in their aggression at trying to get wards. Chiefs with the early advantage. Advantage. Yes, we're going to get aggressive there at level two. Again, Anivia, very strong early game damage, a good range on the auto attack there as well. So lots of harassment here in the matchup, and Sharp will be well contained in the early stages of the mid lane. And already falling low in health, suddenly at least looking very tasty to come gank in the mid, especially at level three when you have all your spells. In fact, there might be a solo, yeah, there's a lot of damage. Damage coming in, Swiffer going in, cancels an auto Sharp, gets ignited down, will not finish him off there as Sharp just manages to survive and Swiffer. A small mechanical error, but a big one. And this is a conflict. Confidence player like Swiffer, top of the MVP charts, but I can tell you for a fact, Pastry Time, he is going to be hating himself for not being able to pick up that kill from just cancelling an auto attack himself. 
We have to watch the early phase in the mid lane because it might not end. And Spooks, he's spotted out Soul Strike. Yeah, coming in for aggression. Just going to go in 2v2. Level 3 there up against Soul Strike. Going to come in. Repel will move him down. And Soul Strike, nowhere to oh. go. Cocoon just missed there. And Spooks can't finish it. A mechanical error from both the Spooks and Swiffer pair that have caused so much of the success for the Chiefs. However, Spooks getting Sejuani so low will be able to steal the blue buff away. Should have been. It already has two buffs himself. So it will be a three buff for the Elise. And the early game champion, the early game just looked even better. A smart invade there from Spooks to go there with Sharp forced out of the lane, but things going to calm down a little bit. We talked about standard lanes being what the Wolves wanted. Chopper and King just fine right now. Good stun on Torrader actually going to come in, but we'll get out of the way of that Boomerang Blade. I guess the only thing, though, it's not, an, it's not a fair fight here in these standard lanes, is it? No, we have to return to the level one and see what it was the Chiefs got. Okay, you could tunnel on the first blood, but much more importantly, the top side of the map has no flash. All three of them used the flash on the invade. So at least we've already seen in previous weeks, and we talked about how close enemy junglers have got to being able to counter jungle as Sejuani. They've been on the same side of the map that Sejuani's been low. They just haven't had the vision. But knowing nobody has flash to go in is... Oh, sharp. Yeah, gonna come in there, trying to tag him for a cocoon. Lines it up beautifully. Flash Frost comes in there as well, and the kill finally confirms. Spooks picks it up. And that's on a Cho'Gath with massive early base stats, with magic resist per level, one of the safest early game mid laners. Only thing that really takes away from safety is the melee range, and when he went to last hit a creep, suddenly the mid lane duo was there. Yeah, we saw the combo again. We talked about it, Cocoon, and that stun from Anivia coming through from massive early burst damage, and Sharp didn't get away that time. I mean, burst damage from Anivia, percentage miss health damage from the Elise Q in melee form. Man, this game got really difficult for Daiwas. They're going to have to try and find an equal footing and it, the mid-game comp, the mid-game's looking earlier and earlier as it's already a 1500 gold lead at 5 minutes for the Chiefs. Yep, game starting exactly how the Chiefs want it, but perfection despite losing his flash relatively untouched here in the top lane and this is a different thing. Perfection's been the heavy focus for the Chiefs in their matches historically in the split. And right now, Vladimir even getting that CS back to even. Flash will be back up very soon. But now there's so much pressure on the Vladimir who has such an item cap before he wants to fight. He needs the Will of the Ancients just to really get his lane into the oppressive factor that we all know. Level 9, Will of the Ancients. That's what we're looking for from Vladimir from his laning. And then he needs to transition into the team fight items. Even though he double scales, he needs to get both ability, power, health, all the resist that needs to come through to navigate a fight and now suddenly he's really the only one that's got through this early game relatively unscathed. Yeah, Spooks coming in again gonna ward up the Gromp and we'll see that it's there. There was actually a pink ward down there earlier that Spooks did not clear out but he's gonna go back in. Wants to clear the ward away. Blue still not cleared for Soul Strikes as well so that buff is not respawning really anytime soon. And so Vladimir has crept into the meta in the last couple weeks. You might wonder why of course Vladimir hasn't really seen any direct changes. He has been passed up in terms of viable top and mid laners. One thing to note, the jungle pressure on average has gotten so much low. It's much more level six gankers like uh, Sejuani and to a lesser extent the uh, Zacks of the world. It's not so much the Lee Sin and Jarvins, but at least definitely harkens back towards early game ganking towards mid-game supremacy. And the Chiefs drafting that mid-game lineup, they want to ensure that Vladimir is not relevant when the enemy Nexus explodes. They want to get this game over before we see three, four item Vladimir. I mean, both these teams, honestly, have not really ascribed to the 5.6 jungle. Neither of them have played very many Sejuani games, if any at all, combined between the split and the playoffs here. So they both like their pressure, but Spooks opted back in for the Elise and Soul Strikes with the Sejuani. You can tell already, struggling to keep up despite the even CS. And the Sejuani Sejuani pick in general just hasn't been a power pick in the Oceanic region. We've seen in other regions Sejuani really being a viable first pick champion, but not so much in the OPL. And as you mentioned, it's been more the mid-game champions with the return of Elise and, of course, Lee Sin and Jarvan that have found a lot of success. And Spook's now going to counter jungle away. The Raptors does get them down. Now continuing to put pressure on Soul Strikes' this map. We'll even leave one there as well, just as a bit of a message being sent there or left in the jungle. Spook's now going to rotate down. Wants to find Soul Strikes still with a level advantage and trying to see if you can get a kill. I mean, even without a level advantage, you're always going to have a dueling advantage as an Elise in the early game. She falls off in the late game in terms of damage, but as single targets, in a 2v2, in a 1v1, get the hell out of there because the Elise does so much early damage. Yeah, Soul Strikes in the back of the lane here in the bottom side now as well, looking to potentially get some aggression on, but Spooks spotted by the ward, cleared it out with the Raptor Sense from the buff that he stole away from the Dire Wolves jungle, and after those first early kills, could have maybe been one or two more, but things have calmed down a little bit. Yeah, and it's going to pass over the blue buff. We're only just now getting to the second blue buff spawn stage in the game. Swiffer versus 
uh, Sharp in the mid. Of course, it's going to be a CS advantage with the uh, uh, pressure that's been put out by Spooks in the mid lane. Level 7 to level 6. As a melee champion, even with good early wave clear, you still need a few more points in the rupture before you can ranged wave clear as Chokers. Yeah, and Sharp's blue going to be heavily delayed because of all the counter jungling that Spooks did. So Swiffer with that blue in the tier, plus the components of the catalyst all completed. Going to have a good amount of pressure here, Sharp. Now level 6, a lot safer and a bit more threatening with the Feast, providing some of the extra health. But so we're going to continue to harass him here. It's worth knowing that Sharp needs to be pretty self-sufficient this game. They have the late spiking Sejuani, who wants to farm up, who needs items to be relevant, not necessarily... And she needs her lanes to do a lot of damage. And at this point, not really going to get that from either of her solo lanes. Maybe from the Sivir in bottom with the Annie. But in general, looking for Cho'Gath to be self-sufficient and already struggling in the early game. And Spooks basically has the run of the jungle. He's had uh, both... Uh, both Scuttlecrubs down during this game. They're starting over on the Dragon, even though it's really a sin by the Diewolves, I don't really think they can contest. I mean, the Diewolves often give up some of the early Dragons anyway. They're a team that surprisingly does not get that many Dragons, at least early first Dragons here. The Chiefs will take away the first. That's conducive to what they want. Boomerang Blade almost snuck in there, but Spooks smites it away. Smites it away. They secure that first. Round. You're completely right. In general, the Diewolves look for that long laning phase. If you look at just the semi-final games, average 10 games... 10 minutes longer games from the Diawas compared to the Chiefs. The Chiefs, they were finishing games early around the 25 minute mark. They picked a comp to do a very similar thing here. The par time, the par kind of, the pass mark for Diawas in the first 15 to 20 minutes is just to try and keep this gold disadvantage around the 1 to 2,000 and get items on Perfection and Sharp. Get those solo laners going because Perfection in particular, plenty of items before he's looking to fight. And it makes sense. It's not the Dragons they're as concerned with because they can get them later once they've scaled up. It's the gold and the pressure from the turrets that they really don't like. So as long as the outer turrets are up for the Diolves and the landing phase is continuing to go, you have to think in some ways that's a win for the team. And it's been just the hallmark of a Diolves win. There's been very long laning phases. Perfection staying in the top. King pushing in the bottom. They both overextend for CS more than any other team would rationally do just because often it's without even wards or necessarily the defensive choice. It's just simple. If you have a hyper carry in the top lane, as we see with perfection on Vladimir, the MVP leader for his team, King down the bottom lane who has the most kills in the OPL. Both of them push their lanes and the enemy jungler, he can only choose one. They're both graphically dis geographically disparate. They're in the top and the bottom lane of the map. You can't be in both places at once unless you're Rek'Sai and have some pretty sick tunnels down. And it's just hard to put out equal pressure. One of them has to get going. Good pull there from Perfection, dodging that maxed up Q damage. will continue getting health back. Level 9 now with the Hextech Revolver, so starting to get quite a bit stronger. Cinderhog done now. Chuffer's coming into the mid. Swiffer in trouble there. Spook's going to try and run it up, but the Teleport will move down there as well. That Swiper coming in for the Chiefs might pop the ulti, but Soul Strike's in the area. Ulti will land there. Sharp comes in. Rapture lands in onto Swiffer. He will get egg there as the Hemo Blake drops off after he pops in there. Egg form. Soul Strike's coming back in. Is Rosie going to join in now as well? Swiper looking Looking to go back and re-engage, Tornado will not reach, Chopper will go down and he's the only kill. Yeah, an eventual 4v4 in the mid lane was won out by the Chiefs, they just have the earlier scaling. After the uh, rupture missed from Choker, they probably should have disengaged from that fight. It was an awkward communication situation where the stun came through from Chopper with the flash tibbers and that caused the rupture to miss. They should have disengaged, it would have been nil all, but this result is another advantage coming through to the Chiefs. And just the one kill, not too bad, but giving Radia free time on the turret as Lucian with an early BF sword is not what the Doctor ordered here for the Wolves here. He'll actually will get the turret, it looks like he'll get very close to as Rosie rejoins him and as we said, when the Wolves turret starts falling, their landing phase kind of comes to an abrupt end that they don't want. And at this point, they're going to try and keep the tower up a little bit longer. They have perfect defensive vision. It's already a risk for King to just stand on this tower because, of course, it could be DPS down if there's multiple members in the area. No, they're just going to back away. They're not looking to end this landing phase that fast with the Lucians because he doesn't have the Infinity Edge. He doesn't have his first big item to rotate. So he's going to sit on this situation, come back to bottom. They're already winning the lane. They're 21 CS up just through the early game pressure and just the fact that Elise always going to out pressure Sejuani in the early game, especially with the fact that the ultimate, the Glacial Prison, has been on cooldown for a while now. Yeah, Berserker Greaves, actually the next finish there for Radio, along with that pickaxe to join in, uh, equal with 80 items for King, so a bit more pushing pressure. You have to think if the Chiefs do want to rotate that that will help them out here. We can see Rod of Aiders coming through for Swiffer, almost completed along with the tier around the 13-minute uh, mark, so a good part-time there, and again, Sharp on the same side. Abyssal Scepter seems to be his first major pickup. I mean, Abyssal Scepter's a massive pickup. Of course, 
course, in metas gone past, we might have seen the double woda when it gave team-wide effects. But in this case, you've got Vlad and Choglath. You've got double magic damage mid, uh, mid and top laners. So pick up the Abyssal Scepter. It'll help Vladimir's damage as well. And it suits him in his lane matchup against Anivia and, to be honest, at least a lot of the time. Yeah, and the Will of the Ancients now done for perfection as well, starting to bully the Silent here in the lane. And you can see the five points in the transfusion, three up in Tides of Blood. This is perfection, Zellman. If the Dialogues can hold this position for about 10 more minutes, this is exactly the type of game they want to yeah, play. This lane, look, you don't have a lot of kill pressure on the Silent still. Of course, he's very close to his Spirit Visage, but you just can't be bullied out of lane by Silent. His base damages on his spells are no longer relevant when on a three, four second cooldown, you're getting a massive little bit of healing. So he can push this wave. He can control it as much as possible. And just the fact that he has pressure on top, that's why on your minimap you can see Sejuani finally actually able to do some counter jungling of her own. Just because there's so much pressure in top. Yeah, actually pull the Mooning Waves just off the turret there for a bit. So actually freezing slightly up against Swiper. So Perfection looking good, but the first tower now going to Chiefs there in the bottom lane. It was sort of inevitable that it was going to go down. And the big question is, where do the Chiefs go now? Because the Chiefs, they need to start pushing advantages around the map. They already have them from the comp they picked and just how the early laning phase has gone. This top lane is a bit of a wash from the Chiefs' perspective, and it should be the Diawals and Perfection getting basically free farm. So it should be a 1v1 in the top, and the pressure's on the Chiefs to make that count in the other parts of the map. Yeah, get those rotations going. Infinity Edge, not quite done yet for Radio. does have the crit cloak, though, so looking potentially into mid now to push down out of the Trogath. But Sharp, we talk about it, he likes to play the Wave Clear Champions, is going back currently, so might lose out a little bit, but with the Feral Scream on a fairly short cooldown, should be able to clear things out, and I love this swap instead. Go to the top lane if you're the Chiefs. Absolutely. That's the lane where you can afford to go. Of course, Vladimir's not going to build any armor necessarily early. Might be looking towards the Zonya's second item pick. That's a common pick, but the, the back has been stopped, and he's going to have a lot harder time bullying around the duo lane of Radio and Rosie. Yeah, just can't, again, get that 1v1 potential that Perfection absolutely loves here. We'll try and push the waves off as best he can, but Lucian, no slouch in any sort of fast push situation. This turret, it's going down, Papa Smithy. Yeah, it's going down. Uh, still relatively healthy though, it's at half health, but the top lane turret, that's the one that's low. It falls down, that's two turrets, the global pressure starting to come through from the Chiefs. They have the first dragon, the second dragon's already respawned, and that's two turrets to zero. Yeah, and they're going to probably look for the last one there in mid at some point. Radio and Rosie continuing to push slightly here as well, actually going to move in with Spooks and trying for another early tier two rotation. The dial is on top of their first dragon, but the Chiefs might get a turret for it. Vladimir is completely zoned away from the turret, nothing he can do despite having pretty damn good wave clear. The Dials will pick up an answering dragon, but losing two turrets for a dragon, an inner turret especially, not an ideal trade for the Dial Wolves. And we've seen this quite a bit from the Chiefs, actually, with the Elise, I believe, in their first semi-final game. Really valued that top tier two turret just to get the top laners back, push our vision aggressively around from the Baron, which makes sense. Second dragon, not that important. First Baron, much more. And there's another factor there, page time as well. You get a lot of control over the Dial Wolves blue buff if you're the Chiefs in this situation. You've got Anivia getting her a permanent uptime on blue buff. Okay, it's not quite permanent, but it might as well be. Cho'Gath obviously needs the blue buff. He hasn't gone for his CDR item first. Very long cooldowns, and it's one of the downfalls of Cho'Gath in general, is those cooldowns are long. If you miss things, you don't do a lot. There's the initiation. Yeah, Swiffer coming in, but Swiper dives in with a two-man ulti. Q will not land as Chuffer has a great stun there on Annie. Good knock up there as well for Sharp, but the Chiefs, they're in the mid lane. They're going to try and push down the third out of turret. The disengaged Tibbers, you don't often talk about that, but it was completely on point by Chuffer, and the re-engaged by Soul Strike. I think he's gone a little bit too aggressive. He does have his ulti, but he's quite low. Cocoon will be flashed there as Spooks looks to move in again. A great double stun there coming through. Chuffer almost goes down, but Perfection down here now as well. Repel will just get Spooks to safety as they're able to buy some more time. The Chiefs still pushing. Raidy now going in deep, flashing on the King, but might have made a mistake. Ulti wide though from Soulstruck gets cocooned up, and Raidy gets the kill. And all the early rotations, just the advantage of the mid game comp makes that Raidy flash look good. It was a terrible flash, no vision whatsoever around the enemy Raptors, but it doesn't matter when you're already ahead in the game. And the Chiefs are forcing the Diawals to react and fight in the early game. This has never been the MO of a Diawals victory. No, they love to, again, have the reactionary game scale up and then fight once they've got their big carries going. But third out of turret, fourth in the game total there for the Chiefs, Will 4. It's equal on Dragons, but those turrets, and especially that gold, not even close. It's just not equal in rotation space time. So great have been the rotations from the Chiefs against a Siva comp. That's the critical factor in this situation, is that with Siva Annie, you're expecting strong reactions from the Dialwars, but then you have the Sejuani who doesn't really fit with that. 
in general, the dial was com especially with no CDR on Cho'Gath, if they don't hit their skill shots on Soul Strikes and Sharp, they just flat out lose a team fight. There's so much downside to a fight coming out from the dial. Whereas every skirmish, you've got Elise, Cocoon, you've got Flash Frost, both on a short cooldown. Skirmish value, it's a, a bit massively ahead for the Chiefs. Even went for that early power spiking AD carry and Lucian, and they're forcing Diwals to fight just because they're going to take down every turret in the game before Vadimir even has two items. And you're right, it's not rotation Sivir here that we're seeing, but that's not what 5.6 Sivir, especially in this comp, is being picked for. Get your big tanks in, get your melee sustained DPS mage in Vladimir deep into enemy territory for big team fights. The issue though, it's the same problem for the Wolves. They look to scale up into the late game and really that perfection do a lot of the heavy lifting, and right now, Chiefs, as you said, just shutting that plan down. So one thing about Sivir is one of the kind of genius things about the Chiefs rotation to top is that although Sivir hasn't necessarily been about mowing down the first three turrets when you're a Sivir comp like she was before, when her laning matchups were really, really strong, still, often the, the first rotation from bottom is to mid lane, and of course Sivir has that on the hunt, can react to those pushes very, very easily. But going for the option on the other side of the map, it's a bit from the Diawals playbook, to be honest. They've been the ones taking advantage of the fact that Sivir, although she's happy in this bottom lane wave clearing, she can't react to multiple members in the top lane without losing on a hell of a lot of fun. Good mind game there from Swiffer, pop shot into the Flash Frost for a bit of damage, but Cho'Gath very tanky, Abyssal Scepter done, Fiendish Codex now coming through for that cooldown reduction you talked about, Papa, that's so important, and getting tanky with the Feast Tax, now level 11 for rank 2 of that ulti. Sharp very tanky, but the Chief's not letting up on the pressure. And Rosie, the moment he pings level 9, instantly goes back and buys the Oracle's uh, red trinket upgrade just to be able to start clearing out the visions. Already looking very dark map here coming through for the Direwolves. Chiefs, they want to just double down on their excellent early game. Ensure they de deny every vision possible. Two pink wards up, giving a little bit of like pressure, uh, pressure uh, possibilities for Vladimir and Cho'Gath. But in terms of just m global pressure, map pressure, it's almost absent from the Dire Wolves. And I mean, the Chiefs do have to keep it up, though. They've got great pressure, like you said. The Wolves playing very reactively all game long, just from the draft even, as you look into this one. But the Chiefs have to keep up the pressure, because Perfection farming now in his happy place in the top lane, getting relatively left alone in this situation. So Vision coming down, next Dragon up in a minute 25. But the Chiefs, if they ever let up for too long, there is, weirdly enough, an, an, a timer in this game. There is a timer, patient time, but the thing to note, as we do see the cocoon lane. It's going to be a bit of harass damage coming through. Vladimir was freezing the lane in top. Siva was freezing the lane in bottom. This is a different thing coming through the dial. Usually they're both pushing and causing pressure. Having no pressure means that this red side jungle and hell, even the blue side jungle to a large degree, is very, very a risky for Diwals to enter. Look at Soul Strikes, level 9 to level 10. Doesn't really have any items or economy going. He's another person. He's another person that scales so well with items. This jungler in particular is going to be held down massively in this game, and it's only going to be useful for the Glacial Prison. And after that, I mean, he had to go Sightstone just for relevance. And that's not what Soul Strikes has been known for in his season. Again, big Rek'Sai, big Jarvan player. Spooks going to get initiated on. Shuffle will follow him, but no stun quite yet. And Swiffer is in the area, going to lock up the Sejuani. Good damage coming through, but the ulti will nail them there to sort of seal them in sharp. Now zoning them off with the rupture. Everyone's safe for now, but things getting tense. Dragon up in 20 seconds. Now, this is certainly not a Sejuani. Jwani, you see in Solo who has got a few items, is looking super strong, who is a threat just in and of herself. This is a Sejuani who's far behind in the game, only useful for an ultimate and just a few defensive wards. All those wards have been cleared out, not getting much value from the side stone now, and Spooks gets actually the cocoon onto Chuffa, and there's the catch. Very, very nice wall, going to force the flash from Chuffa. Big Frostbite there, going to put Chuffa at 50% health, but with the pressure on the Chiefs, honestly didn't even need it. They'll be able to take away their second dragon. I mean, it's the world's safest dragon at this point. You saw the flash is down from Chuffer. Soul Strikes had to use the Glacial Prison defensively just 30, 40 seconds ago. It's on a very low, cool, long cooldown in the early levels, so the second dragon for Chiefs is going to be completely uncontested. And you can see that gold lead still strong for the Chiefs, about 5,500 gold, but perfection farming away. First one to hit 200 CS there along with Swiffer, so good numbers there. Kings actually rotated up. That's a good move there for some pressure. We'll get themselves the turret. The Chiefs are looking to answer in the mid lane. Honestly, that's probably the first time in the history of the Dials 2015, where King and Perfection were in the same lane previous to about 35 minutes. They've always been pushing down waves. That's the f For once, you see King actually has a CS disadvantage, 20 CS behind Radia. They do pick up that first turret, though, get that first taste of the global gold. 
We saw in the one loss the Chiefs had against Fournot, it was a similar sort of gold advantage the Chiefs weren't able to take advantage of. There's still, as you said, a timer on this game. We need to see them pushing for more because they need to be at least monopolizing the blue and red buffs. That's the least, like, smallest objective they need to start moving on towards because just dragons in a two for one at 22 minutes, it's not enough. And I like the defensive area from Direwolves there around their own blue buff. Double pink wards, lots of green wards littering the area there as well. Perfection has gone back. He's got an Abyssal Scepter now, so double Abyssal. If they ever get into any sort of big melee range team fight, possibly with that Ziver ulti, they will rip through the squishies on Chiefs. And this is just a lapse in the game plan coming through from the Chiefs. They should be contesting the blue buff on spawn. They have two turrets down in their top lane. There's just no... The minion waves are helping them out. They've had vision there previously. They should have had a timer down and be contesting for that blue buff just to buff up Swiffer and keep down Sharp even further. So the fact that Daiwas have been able to claim their blue buffs, that's more than they would have expected given how the first 20 minutes went. And look, now King feels a bit more comfortable overextending a bit now. Got oh, the bit. zeal. I mean, look at this mini-map. There's no vision anywhere <laughs> near. It is not a safe spot to be farming young, young Siva, but able to get out there, push in the wave, and suddenly the CS starts to come up for the Direwolves, and suddenly the Chiefs, they need to really start formulating a plan. This is a settled lineup. They've always had clear shot call, and they need to show it right now, because at the moment, the last five minutes in particular, there hasn't been a lot of pressure on the dial. And let's talk about scaling for a bit here, Papa Smithy, as we have a slight lull in the game. We talked about the Wolves. They love to scale. You can see by the champions here, the Cho, the Vlad especially, even the Sejuani here looking to scale up here. The Chiefs do have some insurance, so they've got the Silent and the Anivia. And it's not a crazy scaling cop coming from the Dials. They have the likes of Sivir, who's best in the early game and the mid game. Still can be relevant in the late game, but not against Super Tanks. And Soul, Soul Strikes, he's positioned very aggressively. Getting dope, but not taking too much damage. And a bit of a dive in. Chopper coming in there with a the Tiva. Swiper will get locked up, but Spook has to get out of there. Maybe doesn't have anywhere good to go. King, I think, flashed away there. He was scared of Swiffer coming through, but Shuffer goes down to Radiant just off the top there, died around his own turret. Sharp almost getting locked in perfection, going in massive onto Swiffer, wants him, but the Hamer Plague will pop. It won't quite kill him. And I think the egg might even be there anyway. The Chiefs a bit messy, but they'll keep pushing. And you actually see the monster in pop. They want to keep going. I don't know if they can die, but they're thinking about Swiper it. Swiper wants to dive. Soul Strikes will be the target. Swiffer will get that kill into the Anivia, and the tier two turret will go with it. And the person that was held down the most is Sejuani, positioned aggressively, but didn't have the item to be able to impact the fight at the front just died unfortunately so Chiefs they finally get another objective those five minutes they were good for the Die Wars but you can see the Chiefs still winning those team fights and again the Chiefs have shown plenty of proficiency fighting together especially when behind that's been one of the hallmarks of games where they actually have been behind in the regular season they're capable of fighting here I think the comps are fairly comparable as far as power goes it's just a matter of can the Wolves get to their comfy spot I mean it's an item timings question as well you look at this at Swiper he is shrugging off any semblance of burst damage with the Spirit Vision into the Warmox. So much health already stacked up. Also, the other factor, Elise has got a Snowball Aegis. Still working on the Aegis himself is Soul Strikes. That's going to be very relevant against double AP coming out from the Dials, and he already had the Aegis. Now it's 10 stack Rod of Aegis and the Seraph's Embrace. Hell, even the Haunting guys for a bit of mid-game power. Just the build, it's always one item more for Swiffer and the Chiefs in general, and that's off the back of a 6k gold lead for the Chiefs. Yeah, and that is just the reality of the early pressure in the lead that the Chiefs have been able to build here. So continuing to play on the front foot, but another tower goes down there on the bottom side. King, no wards! Real, I mean, it actually does have some wards, but no right to be there that day. I can understand the no wards. You didn't need to look the minimap most times just proclaim that in this situation had some wards but definitely no aggressive wards but still that's another bonus objective coming through from the direwolves it closes the goalie but not dramatically you feel like Diwolves have done better than expected, especially after losing Flash on all their top side of the jungle and a kill in level one. And in general, Perfection's been the big benefactor. 63 CS, he actually averages a positive CS over enemy laner of 63 and a half CS a game, and it looks like he's right on track. And you know, Perfection just keeps getting stronger, and that's always been oh a worry sign there, but now he's going to get caught up. Spooks will find him at the pool coming in. King going to move in. Shuffer flashing very aggressively onto Swift for his King will come in there as well. Swiper, though, has dove in there and Perfection a little too low to fight. That will force the flash from Elise as the 
Kali moves in onto King, almost snipes him, but the body locks will save him. Rady there gets altered there as it moves in for Vladimir, but Soul Strikes will go down to Speaks Perfection, fighting 1v3, almost able to get them down, but the shield's too strong, too much power from the Chief Sharp. A great rupture, he's gonna get cut off by a stun, does get picked up, Tornado comes in, and that's three for zero for the Chiefs. Yeah, the first pick came on to Perfection. He's the only one who was actually item tuned to fight, but burst down to 30% health. They thought about the re-engage. To be honest, they just stayed too long. They weren't fighting over any objectives. The Daiwas could have just disengaged, but it looks like it's going to pass over Baron to the Chiefs. Yeah, poor Scuttlecrab sort of dies in the collateral there as well. A Swiper roared him into the pit, but Baron getting aggressed on. Will go down here. Soul Strike's not in the area despite being alive, and 28 minutes. The Chiefs now with the first Baron of the final. And this is the first big advantage the Chiefs have been able to claim is the Baron. They still haven't broken the base. There's still hope coming through for the Daiwas, but it's going to be the Dragon picked up as well, the third Dragon, for even more mobility. The 5% movement so it just helps with the rotations, which have already, buying those two turrets, been very on point from the Chiefs. Dragon will melt there to the Chiefs' damage right now, and that'll be their third. Should help with the ro those rotations moving between the turrets, and there's not that many left, just the Tier 2 there for the Direwolves, and then it's inhibitor turrets and eventually those inhibitors. Absolutely, that's the thing. They've done everything but break the base. So we're going to move into a replay. Perfection, as we enter the screen, is already very low. So we see Chuffa going aggressive. He's trying to influence the back line. He actually chases Swift out of the fight, which is pretty good support for mid laner, to be honest. But the re-engage, Radio almost DPS down King with just the culling. There's a lot of disengage coming through from the Dials. It's actually a disengage Hemo play, despite the fact that Billy has no CC. So it forces Perfection to go back in the fight. Again, he's caught away. And finally, Sharp caught by the flash was just at maximum range coming through all of that was preventable they could have disengaged from the fight but they stayed too long that was a really sick culling by radio i have to say lining it up perfectly to basically take king out of the fight despite not getting the kill and the chiefs continuing to play with strength here closer to eight thousand gold ahead now yes the wolves are farming but like you've already said, Papa, the lead right now just a little too large. And Radio has absolutely gone for the optimal build in this situation. You look down this Die Wars lineup, there's what? One armor item, and that's on the Vladimir in terms of scaling up towards the Zonians with that Seeker's arm guard. No other armor. You're going for Infinity Edge Butter, so you're going to do so much damage. And you can see the damage now. Swiper charges in. Sharp will go down to Sion, actually. A Swiper gets that kill for himself, but Radiant is doing a ton of damage right now on the Lucian. And even the big health Cho'Gath, no armor to speak of and right those now. Local Long cooldown, CC or teamfight utility abilities like Hemo Plague and Glacial Prison are always being used defensively, never for an aggressive option. They haven't been able to look for a pick of their own. And the Chiefs, they take down the last of the outer turrets, and all they need to do now is break the base. And yeah, look at Swiper Chain Vest in there as well, just tanking up the turret damage as they wait for the Minion Wave to come in, swaps over to Radiant. Bit of a misstep Siege there. Minions but DPSing it down as well. Yeah, Minion doing well there. Swift now tanking it up. He's actually pretty tanky on Anivia as well. And the base will get broken. Perfection might have been caught Ooh. away. And that that Lucian crit did a lot of work there. Looks for the slow king, trying to get aggressively forward, but he can't protect the inhibitor. The dialers might look for an exit kill, but the Chiefs, they break the base. It's the downside of these long cooldown initiations that they've had to use defensively. They know Glacial Prison is down. Truff is only now getting flash up. They can't re-engage, and when those abilities are on cooldown, Chiefs don't have to respect the Direwolves. And that's definitely the thing for me, has been this Sejuani. Soul Strike, fantastic jungler, had arguably the most impressive looking season as far as first splits go, and he he was known for reactionary junglers, for being in the right place for his team. And now Chuffa gonna flash over, they're gonna try and make it work. Spook's gonna get low silence there and will go down to King. So a 5v4 now. Oh, actually, never mind, Chuffa died as well. Make it 4v4 as Sharp gets chunked up. Perfection trying to carry in the front line, but forced to pull away. Swiffer going so aggressive, wants it, but just gets egged instead. Swiper will protect the egg though, just a bit of boomerang blade damage coming through. And the Chiefs keep pushing. Love Swiper channeling that Dec Decimating Smash just for zone control ensuring no one could kill the egg despite it being very tanky and now just tanking up that inner turret it's going to be the inhibitor turret down you'd have to think with all the damage on radio yeah, and even on a champion like anivia swiffer still trademark aggression radio gonna turn it around kill not quite there culling though down onto sharp he's trying to find someone to feast but no good target chopper coming back into the fight though and that's gonna force the chiefs away king fade away boomerang blade gets onto swiper perfection will zone away the scion and the dials hold for now but that could have gone so much worse from the chiefs the Fancy feat from Raider to Relentless Pursuit away from the Glacial Prison and get trade damage in. 
almost DPS down King himself. He couldn't commit to the fight. Only one member goes down for the inhibitor turret. It's still a massive win for the Chiefs. And look at the difference in builds there for AD carries. Three items done there for King. He's got the last whisper, the Infantum Dancer, and that Infinity Edge, but aggressive items for Raider. You mentioned them already. And even on top of that, a luxury QSS as well. And that's the kind of the secret thing about AD carries is you always want to go for that Bloodthirst to third because as Radio was showing, you just do so much damage to structures in particular. The thing about Lucian is, okay, he's 500 range. It's risky to do turret damage. Usually you have to respect the CC coming through from the Direwolves, especially all the initiation options. But with the Glacial Prison down, you do so much turret damage and you have that lifesteal and shield from the Bloodthirst so that you can just DPS it down. And, and although King has the holy triumvirate of AD carry items, Infinity Edge, Phantom Dancer, and Last Whisper, without the lifesteal, he just can't commit to fights. No, and I mean... At this point, the Glacial Prison's even going to get shrugged off by Raider. He's fairly mobile, but now with the QSS, he can just get out of any of the major ultimates unless he gets hit by a rupture, which would be very poor positioning on his part. He should be fine, and the Chiefs, they're going to keep pushing here. King, by the way, farming down the bottom lane. 333 CS, 281 to 188 is the top, and they're getting the CS, but the difference between the Chiefs and other teams, they're breaking the base. Well, perfection stand up there as well. Beautiful layering by the Chiefs. Now the damage going to come in. A great silence from Shaft will zone them away. Chuff Buffer actually used the ulti to kind of zone them out as well. So a bit of a reset. Soul Strike's going to look for a backing. Gets knocked up by the Tornado. Culling going to come down and Radio gets the kill. Ulti already down. Spooks got Hemo Plague there. Might go down, but not quite. Swiper actually low will go down, but now he's back in his passive form. King just gets out from under that uh, wall there. Perfection trying to DPS them, but it's not enough. And the second inhib falls. The hilarious fact is they actually got that inhibitor through the undead Scion's passive. They're still looking for the engage, but the talisman's been popped. Oh, Swiffer has been stunned. They will get the kill with Perfection. And a couple of sloppy exit kills there. Dial's picking up extra gold. But I mean, Swiper in his... Uh Passive form actually was doing a lot more damage because of the increased attack speed to the inhibitor. Basically soloed it down with no risk of radio, a 500 rage AD carry getting engaged upon. That Nexus turret is so, so low, but it just survives. Yeah, somehow survives good. Aggro juggling there by perfection. Now going to meet the super minion wave with the Vlad and Zona out. Need to see Large Rod is there for him, so Zonya's Hourglass on the way in level 17. The Dialogues, the gold deficit's quite large still at this stage of the game, but they hold on for 10, 15 more minutes, and all of a sudden, the deficit just doesn't look so bad. But you start looking at this game, Pastry Time, and you can see what the Chiefs have done different against the Direwolves that other teams haven't. You're starting to hit those item timers. You look down at Vlad, you look at his CS, and you're like, wow, 105 CS up. He's hitting those item timers he needs. Siv has got all the damage, but the difference is that in all that time, in the 34 minutes, they've gotten four dragons, a baron, eight turrets, and two in Unfortunately for the Direwolves, if you keep your base up and you delay it to this point, absolutely you're doing fine, you're team fire ready. But any team fight goes towards the Chiefs, the game's over. And it's just been a constant delaying of that power window, just taking just enough so the Direwolves have to keep playing on the back foot that's gotten the Chiefs to this position, despite all the farm that the Wolves have been able to find. A second Baron will get a look at now by the Chiefs, but the Direwolves looking to contest. And the big thing to me, difference between Spooks and Soul Strikes, you have to say, we already mentioned the Sejuani held down zero. 0, 4, and 2. Two assists on an initiating tank is so, so low, but they only have four kills. This rotation's fine, but what are they rotating against? Baron's being DPS down. Baron falling so swiftly now as well. Radiant chunking it through there with the help of everyone else. Spooks will get it, and the Dial's not even in time to initiate. King trying there has actually popped the ulti. Locker moves in. Chopper goes in massively aggressive there, but the zoning queue from Sign will keep them up. Perfection will get DPS down and forced to pull early. Does heal it up. Swiper keep going in, and they're still fighting. Sion will go down. Dial will somehow get that kill with the Baron up. Chiefs fighting with the Chiefs now on the right side of the map and Soul Strikes gonna get caught up there. Just tanky enough though. Great wall gonna flash in and nowhere to go. Swift gets that kill. And finally the Dialwars get the team fight they've been waiting 35 minutes for. Perfection with a wonderful pull but might still be dead. Oh, Repel coming through. That will follow in. Perfection now gonna get chased in and movement speed's good. Perfection doing just enough jukes. Buying time or at least trying to. Zonya's perfect there by Perfection. Pull there as well. Again, just buying time. Will go down here. Swift are gonna claim the kill again. Again, but they protect the base. Perfection with the wonderful Vladimir Mechanics. And just the sidestep on the cocoon was just beautiful work. Bought a lot of time. Again, it's time that unfortunately the Dialwars, you don't feel like they're going to be able to put it to good use. It almost feels like one of those games where you're a Nasus with 500 stacks, but your base is completely ruined. And the Chiefs, they're taking no liberties. They want to keep pushing. Rosie actually got watered in a bush where his oracles there and apparently didn't do anything about it.
about it, but the Chiefs just want the objective. Maybe realize the ward. Not that relevant at this stage of the game. Mid inhibitor will fall now. The Chiefs massively ahead as far as Golden setting up for a kill. Soul Strike gets stunned, but the Chiefs starting their siege. They have to wait for their cooldowns. They're not up. Swiper going in there. King forced to flash away. Good screen there. Coming through now is Cho'Gath. We're moving for the rupture. Raider getting aggressed on, but the Seed Me and taking out the turret. King in a lot of trouble, but a great spell shield will keep him safe. Sharp trying to disengage. They're buying time for perfection. He is back now with the Vladimir, but the Chiefs still moving forward. Now going to run in. Great three-man stun, though, from Swiffer. And they'll let the Seed Minions do the work for them. Speaking of Siege, the culling's out. Sharp's low. Sharp in trouble there. Does go down to Radius Q that finds him through it. Double kill there coming through for Lucian. Chief's going to take the last inhibitor turret. Tibbers gets a love tap there as well from the piercing light. The base in Tatters. Chiefs will take game one. Yeah, Perfection's actually still at the back of this fight. Was high health for most of it, but it's not going to matter. We see the team here still with level heads, despite the fact this will be the 1-0 for the Chiefs. Yeah, rock back in their chest. Spooks kind of comforting his teammates, saying, well done, but this is the first game. We don't have time to mess around. A best of five is a long series for any team, and the Chiefs, being the veterans they are, they know that better than anyone. And it's no coincidence that of the four defeats that the Dials have, maybe five it is now, they've Three of them have come against the Chiefs. Every meeting they've been able to rotate around the mid game. And despite the fact that the meta seems to be shifting towards the late game, no one told the Chiefs because they take it down early. They could see King there as well. Just on your screen, Chuffer kind of looking over at him saying, I'm sorry, buddy. King, a young player, maybe a bit hot headed and looked not very happy after that loss. And I felt like a lot of the game was symbolizing the last fight where perfection was heavy. He had lots of items, but he was at the back being ignored because the base was being taken around him. A lot of this game was played around perfection. So instead of just targeting perfection like they did the last two times, they played it around him, and damn, it looked pretty good. And again, the Wolves had some good spots there. The window was almost open for them to get back into that game, but at the end of the day, the Chiefs just got enough ahead that the Dials couldn't scale what they wanted. You know what? We're going to go throw it out to Atlas in the arena for a bit more breakdown on that game. Thank you very much, Pastry Time, and what a commanding victory by the Chiefs in Game 1. Jake, Spawn Type here, of course, standing beside me, and... Man, things went wrong by minute one for the Dials. Yeah, they certainly did. They tried to get on the front foot and go for an early invade, and it went very pear-shaped, picking up first blood. It did go over to the Jhana, but from there, just blew too many summoner spells on the top side of the map. And because Sejuani was so low before she even started her clear, it just meant the Elise could go absolutely crazy. Yeah, and speaking of the Elise, actually focusing on the mid lane, a little bit of old Chief style here as well, very early on. Yeah, it certainly was, and it was just because of the summoner spells being down. Of course, Cho'Gath, that melee range mid laner, always going to struggle against the CC, and the surprising burst damage that comes out of Anivia. So I like what the early tactic was. They mixed it up a little bit, of course, very famous for camping perfection in that top lane, mm. and just got uh, S Swiffer ahead really far. Yeah, and then rotating their bottom lane, of course, Radio playing out of his mind so aggressively, but rotating that bottom lane to the top side of the map and continuing to put the pressure on Perfection's early. Yeah, it certainly was a good move because it was at the stage of the lane that Perfection was starting to get it back. He had about a 20 CS lead. You saw that uh, Swiper had actually been forced out of lane on Scion, and straight away they rotated their bottom lane up. More than that, they cheated their mid laner and jungle towards the top side. Four members were present, and Perfection just had to give it up. Yeah, he had to, although, I mean, after this happened, of course, King, he managed to get a CS advantage. Perfection managed to get a CS advantage. Is this going to help Direwolves as far as their mindset heading into game two? Because they looked in contention towards the end of that game. Yeah, it certainly did. The game looked if it had it gone for about 10, 15 more minutes. They had some answers to it. I think Perfection was up by about 100 CS. King had actually got himself a CS advantage as well. And the Chiefs, they looked like they were blowing off some rust in the first game. Couple of misplayed engages, especially the end around the bottom inhibitor took them a little bit longer than expected to win but hey at the end of the day they walk away with game one and they did it in pretty emphatic fashion they most certainly did and ladies and gentlemen we want to get into game two as quickly as possible we'll see whether this is going to be the train rolling now for the chiefs or whether the direwolves can pick it back up and head through to a victory in game two